Thank you for tuning in to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Early fall snowstorms are often very destructive. The combination of heavy wet snow and strong winds this weekend will likely lead to widespread tree damage, power outages, and blizzard conditions in parts of Montana. Travel in parts of central and western Montana, possibly into northwestern Wyoming, is likely to become dangerous, if not even impossible, especially over mountain passes and in open areas where blizzard conditions could quickly reduce visibility. The jet stream will take a sharp southward plunge from western Canada into the northwest today through the weekend. That will send temperatures crashing well below average for this time of year. Snow will become more widespread later today and continue through the weekend in the northern Rockies of Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. A second round of lighter snow may blanket parts of the northern Rockies and northern high plains Friday into Tuesday. Early fall usually brings thoughts of cool, clear nights and the season's first frost or freeze. But recent years have shown us that big, sometimes destructive snowstorms can happen prior to Halloween. The heavy, wet nature of most early season snow can weigh down the tree branches and power lines, causing them to break. Many trees also still have their leaves, adding extra weight to the branches already weighed down by the snow. Any gusty winds accompanying the storm will blow those snow-covered trees and power lines around, creating a potentially destructive situation. Here are some examples of damaging early fall snowstorms from the past 15 years. In 2017, an early October blizzard struck Montana. Montana was buried by 13 inches of snow on October 2nd through the 3rd of 2017, making it the heaviest October two-day storm in more than 100 years of records. The entire town of Javier lost power because of the trees and power lines down by heavy, wet snow and high winds. In 2013, Winter Storm Atlas brought blizzard conditions, tree damage, and more power outages. The top snow total from the storm was 58 inches, or nearly 5 feet. In the northwest, Lawrence County, South Dakota, Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota clocked the top wind gust at 71 miles per hour. Needless to say, the combination of heavy snow and strong winds led to blizzard conditions in some areas, resulting in road closures, tree damage, and many power outages. In 2012, Superstorm Sandy's moisture fueled three feet of snow in the Appalachians. Moisture from the Superstorm Sandy, in combination with the cold air from a southward dip in the jet stream over the eastern states, buried parts of the Appalachians with up to three feet of snow from Pennsylvania to North Carolina. More than 50 locations saw at least a foot of snow October 28th through the 31st of 2012. The heavy wet snow caused tree damage, knocked down many power lines, and closed roads in the regions. Some roofs collapsed under the heavy weight of the snow in West Virginia. 2011 brought Snowtober, which knocked out power to over 3 million people. This rare October superstorm dumped more than a foot of snow from northeast Pennsylvania to southern Maine October 29th through the 30th of 2011. Incredibly, parts of Massachusetts and New Hampshire saw more than 30 inches. Trees were damaged and power lines were down by the heavy wet snow, causing more than 3 million people to lose power. In some of the hardest hit areas, power was out for more than a week. And last but not least, a storm I had the privilege of taking part in when Buffalo was crippled by lake effect snow in October of 2006. 
This storm occurred on a more localized small scale almost 13 years ago. A band of heavy lake effect snow pummeled Buffalo, New York, October 12th through the 13th of 2006, downing trees, power lines, and knocking out power to about a million customers in the area, including me. I was out of power for over a week. The storm total of 22.6 inches in Buffalo easily beat all-time previous October monthly snowfall records of 6 inches from 1909. Lightning and thunder were constant during the height of the storm. This was due to a very unstable environment in place with relatively mild lake waters at 61 degrees and an air mass that was just cold enough aloft to produce the heavy snow. I hope you enjoyed this little historical fall snow overview. Please consider becoming a paid supporter through Patreon or PayPal. Thank you for tuning in to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed and remember to give us a like and a share. Thanks again. Have a great day. 